Hey there, before we get started today, we just wanted to, you know, thank everyone for the very positive reaction to our limited merch drop. Uh, we're really happy with how everything turned out and we are for sure gonna do more of these in the future. So if you'd still like to grab a shirt, a hat, or a hoodie, head to the link in the, in the description below. Grab it while you can because the store is gonna close on Friday. Uh, we did extend it through, I believe, Friday evening. So if you get paid on Friday, a lot of people were asking about that. Go to a payday loans place. <laughs> no, don't. <laughs> no, never do that. Uh, anyways, after Friday, these items are gone for good. Thank you very much for uh, anyone who checked it out. Now, this is, I think, the first time I've done this on this new channel, but the the set the story that I had second on this video, I'm gonna go ahead and call an audible and put it first because it's ridiculous and it's more it's like more active right now. the The story we are gonna cover is uh, important in the long run, but. Uh, let me just scroll through and I'll get to the new story and we'll start right off with that one. So Fallout 76 is obviously divided audiences quite a bit. And when we say divided, we basically mean like 80-20, uh, maybe even 90-10. Certainly not 50-50. Yeah, and that's uh, with the negative opinions <laughs> on yeah. the, the big side yes. of that pie graph. It's, uh, it's broken, it's full of bugs, it was released far too soon, and it's embarrassing that the game was on sale for nearly Half off, just a few days after it was initially released. Mm. Um, but there are a bunch of people out there who do actually enjoy it. Mm -hmm. One of them is standing right next to me. Yeah. Uh, and there's a few more who were so excited for its release that they went ahead and they threw their hard earned money down to pre-order the Power Armor Collector's Edition of the game, which had a staggering $200 price tag. Mm -hmm. This package was announced right alongside the announcement of the game and by early September had already sold out. Included in the package was the base game in a tricentennial steelbook, a glow-in-the-dark world terrain map, 24 Fallout figurines, some bonus in-game items, and a full-scale wearable T-51 power armor helmet with West Tech canvas carrying bag. Now, hold on. I mean, clearly by looking at the marketing materials, you would assume that the bag you would be receiving is going to it at least somewhat closely resemble the one shown in the image alongside all of the other products. And the website, when the pre-orders had initially gone live back in June, it listed the bag clearly as West Tech Canvas Carrying Bag. So why would anyone assume they wouldn't get the product that they paid for? Well, sorry to say, they got gotcha. you. They got gotcha. uh, When people started receiving their Power Armor editions, it became very clear that the bag included with everything was just some shitty nylon version of the bag that, bag that was shown. Now what's worse is that at some point between June 15th and the actual release date of the game, the website itself was altered and the description of the bag was changed from West Tech Canvas Carrying Bag to a nylon carrying bag. I used the Wayback Machine and caught this. Well, uh, that was just puffery, you know. It's, illegal, it's a legal term, puffery. You know, you sometimes, who, any reasonable person would have expected a shitty bet. Mm -hmm. Also, I, I always have to remind myself that they won like $2 billion in that fucking lawsuit with Facebook mm -hmm. over the Oculus tech. So they have no fucking excuses to cheap out on anything. Yeah. Anyway, so this all, it, I guess, might seem pretty fucking nitpicky. And yes, it's super easy for people who aren't enthusiasts to point and laugh at gamers for dropping a bunch of money on a collector's edition like this. Also, this does happen from time to time where what you receive is different than what you were shown, but usually there is some fine print included on the marketing materials which lists something to the effect of final product may differ or something like that. Yeah. Uh, as far as we can tell, there were no such indications that the final product would be different. And the first release of this pre-order clearly stated that the bag was canvas. So it is, in our legal opinion, <laughs> a shady bait and switch. Yeah, and still- Dun -dun. Still, right now, if you go to the website, it the marketing materials show the canvas bag and not a nylon bag, although it says nylon bag on it. Yeah, they, they forgot the Squarespace password. We're figuring it out. Yeah. Now, taking things about 50 steps further mm. is the response that some customers are apparently receiving when they complain to whatever customer service company is handling things for Bethesda. In a post on Reddit, someone who was upset with the quality of their bag showed their correspondence with a customer service rep, and the reply that they got back was, I mean, it's pretty hilarious in its lack of subtlety, lack of grace, and lack of appreciation for a customer who'd spent $200 on their latest product. This is what it said. We are sorry that you aren't happy with the bag. The bag shown in the media was a prototype and was too expensive to make. 
We aren't planning on doing anything about it. Signed, <laughs> Bethesda Gear Store Support North America. <laughs> wow. The the final wording in that is just so fucking brash. Oh, you want uh, demand satisfaction? Well, too fucking bad. Literally, we aren't planning on doing anything about it. So yeah, obviously, that, that's got to be fake, right? No AAA gaming company would ever send out such a dismissive email to a loyal paying customer. It, it, there's just no way that a company like Bethesda would respond like that. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it does seem, it seems fake. Everything seems fake these yeah. days. But someone on another subreddit apparently verified the DKIM signature of the original email, whatever that means, and said that it is real and signed by Bethesda.net's email server. All right. Yeah. Still though, we don't know enough about how this type of verification works. So I don't know, sorry, our bad. Yeah. You'll let us know. But this is pretty damning for Bethesda and you would expect a response real soon, if not by the time this video airs. And hold on, let me pick up the fantasy phone here. Hello? Shibby? Yes. Oh yeah, yes. Oh, did he pre-order this bullshit? I miss you, Shibby, first of all. You don't miss me, that's fine. Oh, Bethesda has responded? Was it a good response? Oh, it wasn't? Send it to me. Cool. And he did send it to me. So oh. well, let's, let's crack that baby open. Ah, yes, here it is. They, they responded with their official Bethesda Game Studios account to uh, this, this whole thing. And they said, uh, thanks for tagging us in this post. We're not sure if you've seen this make the rounds on various areas of the internet yet, but we have made an official statement about this issue and included it below. The Bethesda Store's support member is a temporary contract employee and not directly employed by Bethesda or Bethesda Game Studios. We apologize to the customer who took the time to reach out. The support response was incorrect and not in accordance with our conduct policy. Unfortunately, due to unavailability of materials, we had to switch to a nylon carrying case in the Fallout 76 Power Armor Edition. We hope this doesn't prevent anyone from enjoying what we feel is one of our best collector's editions. Thanks again. You guys know all about scavenging, right? Sometimes you need a little bit of aluminum. You need some parts. We only had 400 slots for canvas in our stash box. And well, you know, we had to make some, some big sacrifices so that we weren't over encumbered as a company. But how fucking, even that was, even the official response was like, by the way, don't just worry. A, yeah. It's just that we ran out of materials. Sorry, go fucking yeah. deal with your fucking nylon bag. It's a slightly more polite, uh, oh dismissal. yes, yes, cer certainly slightly more polite. Yeah, but also offers like it's not even just like, hey, since this guy's basically making a mockery of our company, we're just gonna go ahead and send out some canvas bags to make good with everyone. No, it's just no, you you're not getting anything, but thanks for buying it. Still, yeah. yeah. So technically, I think the first response was actually more to the point because it's the same reaction almost. Yeah, I mean, if you're gonna fuck me, fuck me in the front. <laughs> Real friends, fuck you in the front. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, let's go back now to the story that was going to be first, and it's also about, uh, you know, gaming companies, you know, doing nefarious things to make money. Okay, so th this is the news that was going to be first anyway. Uh, it's the fact that the FTC will now be investigating loot boxes, <laughs> finally, after being asked once again by Senator Maggie Hassan during a Commerce Subcommittee meeting. The Senator Hassan re uh, revived the whole issue after not only acquiring about it earlier this year, but also previously asking the Entertainment Software Ratings Board, or ESRB, to do their own investigation into how it currently rates games that include loot boxes, adding that if they refused, she'd get the FTC involved. Is Senator Hassan a girl gamer? Mm-hmm. She cool. kept her word though, and uh, despite the ESRB simply adding a note that says, contains in-game purchases to its game ratings, she has bluntly asked the FTC to start an investigation and this time around was even able to cite the recent developments regarding loot boxes that have already started to be implemented over in Europe. We should point out that this investigation does not seem like it would be geared towards microtransactions in general and that digital storefronts that sell you the exact items that you want through either real or digital currency would not be subject to any ruling if and when one is made. So the, the difference would be like Fortnite, you buy the exact Skin yeah, that talking you want. about like oh, but Overwatch you get a, a loot box yeah, that could be anything. They're basically like they're scratchers. Mm -hmm. But you to actually you don't even get a physical reward from them. Anyway, mm -hmm. yeah, it's essentially it's for those mystery loot box systems where you you pay real currency for the opportunity to potentially win something you want, which is similar to gambling because it is. Uh, despite there being, in most cases, no monetary value in these rewards. So in her statement- It's like gambling, but it's even stupider. Yeah, and also like well, how you how you uh, phrased it with the, it's like scratch offs. Well, at least that money 
partially goes to the education system yeah. in the state where it happens. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. If Blizzard was donating all the loot box money to the education system in Irvine, then sure, we'd have the biggest and brightest coming out of Ir Irvine. Irvine doesn't need any education funding. There, Irvine uh, University High School in Irvine, California. What a dumb name. Well, because it's adjacent to I, UCI. Uh -huh. It's one of the nicest fucking high schools I've ever seen in my life. Their There's whole the loot box. Irvine, they don't need any help with their education system. Anyways, local talk. <laughs> in her statements, she says uh, she defines the term loot boxes as something which, quote, allows in game purchases with real currency for surprise winnings. Uh, she says loot boxes are now endemic in the video game industry and are present in everything from casual smartphone games to the newest high budget video game releases. Children may be particularly susceptible to engaging with these in game purchases, which are often considered integral components of video games. Just this month, Great Britain's Gambling Commission released a report finding that 30% of children have used loot boxes in video games. The report further found that this exposure may correlate with a rise of young problem gamblers in the United Kingdom. Belgium, Netherlands, and Japan have moved to regulate the use of loot boxes in video games given this close link to gambling. Given the seriousness of this issue, I think it is in fact time for the FTC to investigate these mechanisms to ensure that children are being adequately protected and to educate parents about potential addiction or other negative impacts of these games. Would you commit to undertaking this project and keeping this committee informed about it? Damn, Senator. Mm -hmm. So the response to the statement from FTC Chairman Joseph Simmons was a clear yes. Mm -hmm. Which means that sometime in the very near future, the Federal Trade Commission will start an investigation into what is clearly seen as predatory tactics from certain companies within the video game industry. When this was brought up previously, the Entertainment Software Association and their president, Michael Gallagher, pushed back on this type of thing, claiming that classifying loot boxes as gambling challenges our industry's freedom to innovate and impairs our ability to continuously test new business models, which drive creativity and engagement with our audience. Okay, buddy. And in an immediate response to the pending investigation, the ESA sent a statement to various outlets, including one to Polygon, where they said, Loot boxes are one way that players can enhance the experience that video games offer. Contrary to assertions, loot boxes are not gambling. They have no real world value. Players always receive something that enhances their experience, and they are entirely optional to purchase. They can enhance the experience for those who choose to use them, but have no impact on those who do not. Is the ESA like the NRA of video games? My video games from my cold... You can take my fucking loot boxes when my you try them from my cold... Fuck dead hands. I think we should get more loot boxes. <laughs> the only way to combat bad loot boxes is with more good loot boxes. Yeah. Higher priced loot boxes. They give out better rewards. <laughs> They're more effective. Some psychiatrist is gonna tell me that these children are all getting addicted to gambling. <laughs> Why don't you stay in your lane? Yeah. Okay. This is my lane. We know that his, the last part of his statement, the, the one that it, it doesn't have an impact on games if you don't get them, that's kind of bullshit. Yeah, there's thanks. Some, a lot of pay to win games out there. Yeah, it's the, primarily thanks as, as far as AAA go, go, games go, uh, thanks to the controversy that erupted last year surrounding the Star Cards loot system that was tied to Battlefront. Uh, when it comes to mobile games, that's even it's, worse. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The other part that doesn't really hold water is that you can just choose to not purchase any loot boxes for a chance to win, which, yeah, it's true, but in the statement, they're trying to show that it's in no way similar to gambling, which you can also choose not to do. Yeah, this is like setting up a setting up a daycare center in the middle of a Las Vegas casino where none of the security guards are paying attention, just being like, guys, I don't see the problem. I mean, yeah, yeah yes, some of the kids are running around pulling on the slot machine arm. It's fun. But like... That's their choice. Yeah. Just because we put the daycare right in the middle of the slot machine section mm -hmm. doesn't mean it's our fault that this is happening. So in their statement, they completely avoided mentioning how whether or not these types of mechanics are predatory when it comes to children especially, because you could just assume this type of shit could, at the very least, make them more susceptible to a potential gambling addiction in the future. You could say that. You could. And you might be right. You could. So, this issue is a strange one for us because on the one hand, we're not fans of loot boxes in general, but it's also hard to argue that if games are rated specifically for adult consumption, M for mature, Peggy 18, that the developers and publishers shouldn't be allowed to implement something like this. In that case, it would be kind of like on you. You're an adult, we're all adults here. Yeah. Uh, it would be on you to participate in the gambling, or <laughs> it's not actually gambling, participate in the games of chance yeah. or not. <laughs> 
as long as the rewards are in fact simply cosmetic and don't give you a competitive edge specifically in a multiplayer setting. But when it comes to games that are geared towards kids and feature ratings that tell parents, this game is fine for your kids, uh, then yeah, it's probably a pretty fucking bad idea <laughs> yeah. to include loot boxes. And uh, maybe that should have some oversight. But uh, hey, you let us know what you think in the comments below. Yeah, because I'm sure this will divide people just like Fallout 76. Mm -hmm. But um, to add on to all of that really quick at the end here, it's kind of already been proven that publishers, they will fight back against this type of regulation by simply taking their games away from fans instead of removing the loot boxes. And that's done as a way to spite the governments who put restrictions on them. Just last week, it was reported that Square Enix had pulled three games off the market in Belgium because of legislation in that country. Mobius Final Fantasy, Kingdom Hearts Union X, and Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia, whatever. Uh, they were all taken down. And, and yeah, those are just mobile games, but it's a clear signal that publishers can and will make things unavailable to consumers if they can't monetize them in the certain ways that they want to. Again, you tell us what you think about this. Should the FTC step in and potentially regulate the way loot boxes, specifically ones geared towards children, should work? Or is that just stepping all over the freedoms of game companies to make money. I believe the invisible hand of the market will decide. Should decide whether these kids you know are addicted what? to gambling. I think all the game companies based in America should come together and launch something called Gamers United, which fights back against government regulation. <laughs> I just love because like the. I mean, I'm not uh, entirely clear on how the Belgian government works. Probably parliamentary system. But well, it's it's like, just, they're just eating chocolate like, all the time. I, it's, like, it's not like fucking gamers are going to go out and protest like, give me my Final Fantasy back. Yeah. They don't even go outside. Yeah. So it's fine. So, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. No Anyways, here. Let us know what you think about Bethesda and let us know what you think about the FTC. The FTC won't let the gamers be. Or let us be us on Twitch TV. <laughs> Fuck off. Uh, watch the newest episode of Tech News Day, and uh, also check out uh, last week's episode of Weekly Weird News in case you missed it over the holiday, because uh, we did dart, professional darts? Darts and fart. farts. Darts and farts, baby. There's a fart problem. <laughs> also, be sure to check out the merch. It's your last chance. Link in the description below. We'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.